And so let me uh, begin by asking, uh, did you enjoy the parish mission this past Monday, Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday? Yeah. Uh, and if you, uh, if you were here for any of those nights, uh, the weekend masses were inspiring, and I think uh, we can sh surely say that the afterburners of Father Jim are still glowing onto us. And uh, what an energetic guy. I just wonder about how I don't get to have all of those strange experiences, right? I mean, is that really weird? And then somebody says, but he is such a big character, he's putting himself in those situations all the time. And I think, yeah, I'm just a real quiet guy. You wouldn't compare to him. But I was thinking, I, I was thinking, what kind of you know, experiences have I had at the airport before? And other than being shaken down, you know, and patted down and different things, I'm very suspicious looking, apparently. I don't know if I really had any encounters like he has had, except I do remember one. It was a Detroit to uh, Fort Lauderdale flight, and uh, I was near the front of the plane, but not in first class because not everybody sits in first class, right? Most of us sit in coach where we're chewing on our knees, right? And uh, I remember watching this big, huge guy walk on, and wouldn't you know, it was Dennis Rodman, the basketball player. He was dressed normally, kind of. And, uh, <laughs> but I was looking at him, and he was, he was trying to be inconspicuous. He had a baseball hat on, pulled down, and he had sunglasses on. And, uh, yeah, but all of those earrings and everything kind of give you away, you know? So, but that was real interesting, and I just wondered to myself the whole flight, I wondered, how did you get through the metal detectors? You know, it's like, it would have been impossible. It would have taken him hours, earring off and all the nose ring out, you know? Holy moly. That's about as good as I can do. I didn't take any time to talk to him, because he was up in first class, of course, and I was back in the nature in section. At any rate, uh, what a nice time it was, So, And I think Father Jim, uh, uh, Shishko, right? Sh 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 Psycho, I think he said. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I think he had some really good messages. And the things that I remember the first uh, night, he gave kind of what Pope Francis uh, had encouraged him. And I think uh, if I remember the three things correctly, the first thing he said was that we should listen with compassion. I think that's what I heard, although I, I'm kind of fuzzy on that. Uh, but that was the first thing that Pope Francis had told him to share with the people about being people of mercy. Listen with compassion. The second thing was, as I remember hearing it, was, was um, give people the benefit of the doubt. Remember that one? Give people the benefit of the doubt. And the third one I really, really remember because he said, don't be a jerk, <laughs> right? That one really hit home. I thought, that one I could use, I think. <laughs> so, but, uh, you know, when we think about his calling, it's really a remarkable calling, how he was invited by Bishop uh, Stowe to give his life in proclaiming the gospel, doing these missions, but, you know, proclaiming the gospel just by the way he's living his life. And I think that that's what Jesus calls us to. In today's gospel, it's a very familiar story of the call of the apostles, and yet, you know, what he was calling them to was a way of life, a different way of life. And that's kind of the way Father Jim's life looks. And believe it or not, that's kind of the way our lives can look too. It's a different way of life that we're called to as followers of Jesus. And in fact, I was thinking how um, Jesus calls us to discipleship, not a democracy. And I was thinking about how important that is because when we think about it, we're not called to, to a democratic experience of church. What we're called to is following in obedience our Lord. And what Jesus was inviting those, those uh, fishermen, Peter and Andrew, James and John, to, and the others, was a change of life. 
right? He was inviting them to walk a different path than what they've ever known before, and to do so in obedience. See, the implication was that Jesus was a rabbi, right? And they were putting themselves at his feet as their teacher, as their master, which is the way that it worked. And whenever you place your feet, your, your person at the feet of the master, it's there then that you begin to follow in obedience. And so he was calling them to discipleship, which means to be the student, the learners. And uh, you have to imagine that, you know, as we think about these adult men in our minds, probably between 18 and 25, Jesus was really calling them to a new and different way of life. And so too with us. And I think that that's really um, important. Are you ready to live that new and different way of life? Where uh, the wonderful and the wacky can happen if you only let it. Like Father Jim, right? The wonderful and the wacky. How many, how many of us are comfortable enough to step into a situation that might become wonderful or turn very wacky? Shelly is. <laughs> she works here, so that's <laughs> a given, I think. With, but uh, it is true, isn't it? And that's what it's, our, our comfort level needs to go down. You know, it's got, we can't be on guard. Right? I'm not quite sure it's me. And I think, you know, when we think about it ourselves, we all have received that calling, that calling of discipleship. And I hope that your, your discipleship leads you to some wonderful and wacky opportunities to share the good news of Jesus, to, to say things that people in the world don't say because maybe they're not believers. You know, to, to be in that wonderful moment of, of God's grace, where you can open up the heart of somebody to draw closer to the Lord. Because that's what he really uh, commissioned these men to do, was to go out and what? Become fishers of men. And I think uh, one of the other things that I wanted to share with you this morning is just how important that is for all of us to step into the wacky and wonderful world of discipleship. And, uh, you know, our comfort level is something that we really have to overcome. Are we worthy? Well, none of us are worthy, you know? It's, um, it's one of those things where we're called. That's the important thing. We're called to do this. And uh, when we think about it, you know, it's a calling to go out and gain disciples for Jesus, to find believers. It starts in our family home, and uh, yet it stands to the workplace and, and to other places where, where we are able to influence the environment around us. Again, to step, step into the wonderful and the wacky. A Renario Cantalata Mesa. Cantalata Mesa. I think that's the way it's like. Maybe my attendant is bad. He's a papal preacher, right? The papal household preacher. Has been preaching for the popes for the uh, last three popes. So Francis, Benedict, and uh, John Paul II. And uh, he says that in light of this gospel, the church might be more described as keepers of the aquarium than fishers of men. I thought, what an interesting statement to make. That the church is more interested in being the keeper of the aquarium than to be fishers of men. Great insight, isn't it? And it's a great challenge to all of us to begin thinking about the way we live our life, the invitation to that new and different way of life, and how it is that, yeah, none of us are, are qualified, but it's Jesus who qualifies us because of his call, because of our baptism, because we can do this. We can do this. And in many ways, we need to do this. For the sake of the kingdom of God. For the sake of carrying on Jesus' mission to the world. So think about it. 
You're being called as a disciple. And uh, you're called to, to be obedient to the master. And to, to be ready to be able to step into the wacky and wonderful. Are you ready? I can tell you for a fact I do this day in and day out. And my world isn't maybe as wacky as Father Jim's. <laughs> But I do 